This is Channel 4, where a surprising battle is about to commence above the skies of a famous Islamic city. The Punjab, land of five rivers flowing south to join the Indus, is the breadbasket of Pakistan. Man existed on the banks of these rivers 50,000 years ago, and this vast fertile plain has caught the eye of invaders ever since. Over 20 centuries, Aryans, Greeks, Huns and Mongols conquered the land, and the city of Lahore grew in importance because of its strategic position on the Silk Route. In 1524, Baba, the founder of the Mughal dynasty, captured Lahore, and a golden age began. Akbar the Great made Lahore the capital of his Mughal empire and rebuilt the fort as the massive edifice we see today. His son Jahangir added to the fort and embellished it with these beautiful ceramic tiles depicting sporting life in the Mughal court. He laid out formal gardens and was buried here by his son Shah Jahan in this magnificent mausoleum. Shah Jahan, best known as the creator of the Taj Mahal, allowed his architectural flair full reign in Lahore, adding magnificent marble buildings to the fort, which, like the Taj, features intricate inlay work. He also created the fabulous Shalimar Gardens. Laid out along traditional Persian lines, they rise through three terraces of symmetrical ponds, which created a cool and restful playground for the royal household. Aurangzeb, the last of the great Mughals, was an austere ruler compared to his father, Shah Jahan. Despising ornamentation, he built the mighty Alamgiri Gate and the Badshahi Mosque opposite, one of the largest in the world. Here, a hundred thousand people can worship together. In contrast, the Wazir Khan Mosque, built 40 years before, is small and beautifully decorated. With the decline of the Mughals, the Sikhs took over the Punjab and built their tombs for Guru Arjan and Ranjit Singh in the shadow of the Badshahi Mosque. But by 1849, the British had expanded their empire to cover the whole subcontinent and added Lahore to the other jewels in their crown. Through all these centuries of conquest, the spirit of the people of Lahore remained unbowed. They survived and flourished and waited till the creation in 1947 of the state of Pakistan, embodied by this monument, Minare Pakistan. Although the legacy of the British includes the national sport of cricket, for the people of Lahore, there's another, older sport that raises as much, if not more, passion.
Well, it can happen every week or whenever there's a holiday. We can just have uh, our neighbors on the rooftop to fly the kites and we have the matches. I was about four years old when I started flying kites. And from that time onward, you know, we've been doing it. It passes from one generation to the other generation. First of all, it was simply confined to the children, but now it's a sport for the grown-ups too. And some women are also trying to take some interest in this, and they are enjoying this fun. Usually, it's not a girl sport here. Now girls have started flying, but uh, when I was younger, I think I was um, one of the very few who used to fly at that time. I used to sneak up to the roof with my brothers in the afternoon, and we used to fly up there, you know, and if ever my parents found out, we would be uh, scolded, you know, and all. But uh, that's how I started up, and now I fly kites regularly. Girls usually don't fly because of the cuts here now. The boys here bleed uh, with the cuts and all, but the girls are scared of the cuts. So I try not to have any cuts now. Although kite flying is popular in almost every country that can muster a light breeze, it is only here in Pakistan and parts of India where this form of competitive kite fighting has developed. Here in Lahore, this sport has become a consuming passion. It all began in the old city, where the houses are tightly packed together and their flat roofs make a perfect setting for a kite fight with your neighbor. The sport is popular all year round but the excitement starts to build as the February celebration of Basant, season of spring, approaches. contest between our two neighbors, they want specially made kites. Raja is getting his from a master, Ustad Nukka. To make a kite, you need two simple ingredients, lightweight tissue paper and bamboo. The skill is all in the making. The bamboo is often burnt with a candle for decoration but strength and flexibility are what counts. Here, a simple diamond-shaped kite called a guddi is being made. It will sell for about eight rupees, less than 23 pence, but the craftsman can still only make about 25 kites a day. The quality of paper is also very important. German paper is regarded as the best, followed by Australian, Norwegian, and Chinese. The glue is a mixture of wheat flour, sugar, and gelatin, known as levy. For kite fighting, the patang, a sort of kidney shape, is the most popular. They can be further distinguished as male and female, the male having the larger bottom half. Different sizes of fighting kite are chosen according to the strength of the wind. Ustad Nuka is famous for his decorative kites and is in great demand before Basant. <laughs> 
ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੇ ਇੱਕ ਮਿੰਟ ਦੀ ਬੇਲ ਨਹੀਂ ਰੋਟੀ ਖਾਣੀ ਵੀ ਓ ਇਟਸ ਅਨ ਇੰਪੋਸੀਬਲ ਟਾਈਮ ਆਈ ਡੋਨਟ ਗੈਟ ਅ ਮਿੰਟ ਟੂ ਮਾਈ ਸੈਲਫ ਡੋਨਟ ਹੈਵ ਟਾਈਮ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਮੀਲ ਨੋ ਟਾਈਮ ਈਵਨ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਕੱਪ ਆਫ ਟੀ ਇਟ ਗੋਸ ਕੋਲਡ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ देयर ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਫਲੱਡ ਆਫ ਕਸਟਮਰਸ ਡੇ ਐਂਡ ਨਾਈਟ ਪੀਪਲ ਡਿਮਾਂਡ ਕਾਈਟਸ ਮੋਰ ਕਾਈਟਸ ਪਤੰਗਾ ਪਤੰਗਾ ਇਹ ਦਾਦੇ ਪੜਦਾਦੇ ਤੋਂ ਚਲਾ ਆ ਰਿਹਾ ਕਾਈਟ ਮੇਕਿੰਗ ਹੈਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਇਨ ਮਾਈ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਫॉर ਜਨਰੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਵੀ ਗੋ ਬੈਕ ਅ ਲੌਂਗ ਟਾਈਮ my forefathers felt that it should only be done for pleasure but i chose to make a business out of it chatti ka the design banaya ji main i have made about 36000 different designs i have created the most beautiful kites you can imagine they are unequaled in pakistan no one can match me for my skill in the entire country they can cost from 200 rupees to 500 even 1000 rupees there are a lot of designs which people love and they choose them for their kites they feel quite pleased just hanging those kites on the wall rather than flying them <laughs> Lahore is also the center of Pakistan's carpet industry. Although a new innovation, the business having grown up since partition, Pakistan already ranks as one of the world's top producers. The carpets are mainly woven in the villages and then brought to Lahore for finishing. Raja's next-door neighbor, Zahid Hakim, runs a carpet finishing business. The best carpets are made to traditional Persian patterns and can fetch thousands of pounds in the smart shops of London, Paris and New York. But before these precious carpets can be shipped off all over the world, they are subjected to a punishing ordeal of singeing. Then washing in a fierce mixture of hydrochloric acid and bleach to fix the color. Today, Zahid spends his lunch hour visiting his door maker to make sure he has the very best string for his neighborly match on Friday. I like to fly kite. My wife, my children, my family nobody likes it. But, uh, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do anything except flying kite. That's the only thing what I do. So, kal hai ke kal lege na sade page raja sahab nal. Bade ਲੱਗਦੀ ਫਾਗਦੀ ਦੇ ਪੇਜ ਨਾ ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰੋ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਡੋਰ ਲਾ ਕੇ ਚੰਗੀ ਦਿਓ ਸਮਝ ਆਈ ਭਾਜੀ ਅੱਜ ਤੇ ਅੱਜ ਕੱਲ ਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਟਾਈਮ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਾਏਗਾ ਤੇ ਬਸੰਤ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਫਿਰ ਲਵਾਣਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਸੰਤ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋ ਸਕਦਾ ਉਹਦੀ ਵਜ੍ਹਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੇ ਸਾਰਾ ਸਾਲ ਆਉਣਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਸੰਦ ਆ ਕੀ ਤਲਸ ਉਹ ਤੇ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਜੁਮਾ ਜੁਮਾ ਆਟ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਲੋਕ ਨਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਪੇਜ ਹੈਗੇ ਨਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਨੇ ਕਰਨਾ ਪਏਗਾ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਅੱਜ ਕੱਲ ਜਿਹੋ ਜਿਹਾ ਮਟੀਰੀਅਲ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਯਾਰ ਮਟੀਰੀਅਲ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਲਾਣਾ ਸੈਵਨ ਆਫ ਦੀ ਬੋਤਲਾਂ ਲਾਣੀਆਂ ਨਾ ਹੋਰ ਕੋਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੂਸਰਾ ਲਾਣੇ ਇਧਰ ਉਧਰ ਪਲੇਟਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਪੀਸ ਕੇ ਲਾਣੀਆਂ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬਸੰਤ ਦਾ ਕੰਮ ਹੋਣ ਰਹਿਣ ਦੇ door making is perhaps the most fascinating aspect of the whole kite business working as itinerant traders the door makers set up shop almost anywhere and are regularly moved on their main requirement is space so that the string can be stretched between wooden posts driven into the ground 50 yards apart This enables the string to be coated with a special paste containing ground glass to give it the cutting edge that kite fighting requires. The paste itself is made by boiling wheat for several hours and then straining it to remove the husks. Color is also added which helps distinguish it from your opponents during a match. To enable every inch of a 9000 foot ball of door to be totally covered with the glass mixture each thread must be kept separate during the whole process Having bound the strings in this way they are covered with a preparatory color wash which makes the string sticky and better able to take the paste Due to the increased demand before Basant 
Some unscrupulous door makers will use almost anything to supplement the ground glass, even old crockery. But for Zahid Hakim, this door maker is trustworthy because he uses only ground 7-up bottles. In Zahid's opinion, the champagne of ground glass. Before the paste is applied, the string is stretched one more time to make sure there's no give at all, which could cause the paste to crack. As the door becomes increasingly lethal, protecting your fingers is essential. The final surprise is that the center of the ball is an ordinary lavatory ball cock with a few stones inside to give it a jolly rattle. And the necks of the 7-up bottles provide ideal protection when winding the door. I have taken my BA degree and it was after my graduation that I came into this business. My brothers were already door makers, but being uneducated, they weren't managing the business very efficiently. So it was partly to help them and partly to make a living that I came into this field. It's a hard, tough life. You work from morning till night, also you have a lot of hassle with the customers. Your hands bleed because the work involves messing about with glass. So there are a lot of problems in this work, especially before Basant, when the problems become magnified. At last, it's Friday, a weekly holiday devoted to prayer and rest and kite flying. The day of the match has arrived. We will balance this. This string will be a little bit smaller than this one, so that the kite should fly up. After a final check that the kites are balanced, the families begin to gather on the roof. Zahid's team are using yellow and green kites, and Raja has decided to fly black ones. Students of the art understand the complex movements that you need to win a match or page and can analyze strategies and tactics up to a mile away. Well, this is the match between the yellow and the black kite and the object is to get the strings across. The kites can be cut only if the string goes across. And the yellow one is swooping down on the black one. The black one is trying to gain distance and there comes the yellow one. No, no, he's missed his chance, he's going up again. He's trying to gain height to swoop down again, and the black one, there. He's missed him, he's missed him. He's trying to hook him, as it were, coming down, coming down, and there he takes him. He takes his string up, and the yellow one is now pushing up. The black one is in a bad position now, but he's trying to maneuver downwards so as to gain strength from the wind and the kites are now going further and further off. The yellow one is maneuvering down. He's trying again to gain strength from the wind so that the string really pulls and cuts. Maneuvering very brilliantly, he's trying to swoop towards him and trying to get him, as it were, from very near the kite. That would give an additional advantage. Now both, ah, oh, he's got it. The black one has got it. Oh yes, the yellow one is cut now. As one kite drifts away to provide free fun and sport for the finder, 
the unwritten rules forbid you to go after your lost kite, another yellow kite is already up and waiting to join battle in the sky. And they are trying to gain distance now. Both are going up now, trying to gain the strength of the wind. The black kite is trying to undercut the yellow one. And there he goes, he's, he's trying for that. He's trying to get a string across. The yellow one is now trying to maneuver on the left-hand side, towards the left-hand side, and he's got him, he's got him, there. The black kite is cut now, and the yellow one is going up in victory. This is a wonderful match. It doesn't matter where I am, I always come for Basant in Pakistan. It is a nice festival. I'm from Australia. Last time I was in States, I had to fly down. I mean, I had to cut short my trip for about uh, one week just to get, get here in time. It's, uh, I don't know, just the feeling, you know, to feel the kite in your hand, you know, is to make the kite fight, and, you know, just to win, you know, it's, it's, it's a different feeling. It's very hard to explain. You know, it, it's a good feeling. <laughs> The black one is swooping down, a very fine diver now trying to come up from the left, from under the green one, and the green one is trying to close in. The, the black one is going to, oh, the black one is cut, the black one is cut. That was a bad maneuver on his part, and the green one is rising in victory, a wonderful sight. A wonderful sight, a wonderful sight. <laughs> Now the other party has put up another black kite. And the green one is swooping on it. It has a basic advantage. It is some distance away. And it has managed to get hold of the string. Really, the string is now crossed and the black one seems to have lost any air velocity. The green one is in a happier position, but the black one is also trying, really trying to gain distance, gain distance. That is a very low dive, a very low dive, trying to gain strength, trying to get the string across. Now they're almost at rooftop level. Both kites trying to gain some sort of advantage, but the green one seems to be in a happier position. Both kites are now simply trying to get the string really pulling. There, you can see the distance now. The black one is nearer and the green one is further off. And the kite which is further off always has an advantage. Now the black one is trying to come up in the air to gain more strength. But still, it is not in the center of the air current. The green one is maneuvering in a better way. That man who's flying the green one seems to be more skillful and he is trying to keep as close as possible to the black one. Now the black one is diving down, trying to get some pull, trying to dive again, again a deep dive, and he's trying to come up now really hard against the string of the green one. That is a good maneuver, let us see what result it gives. Ah, oh, you have the result, the black one has succeeded. The black one has succeeded. Oh, that is very wonderful. Contests like this continue late into the evening, but the excitement on these roofs is just a foretaste of what's to come, the Festival of Basant.